Hello and welcome again to the Foundation of Faith broadcast. It's always so great to know that you can join us in this broadcast. Um, this is class two, where we are looking at the integrity of God's Word. Um, we've looked at lesson one, which is the nature of God. Then we also have looked at lesson two, the reality of God's Word. Um, we looked last time at the covenant and the promise. And you will recall that we said to help us understand this, we can interchange the word covenant with agreement. And so building upon this line upon line, precept upon precept, we now want to look at the effect of filling our heart with God's word. And for me, when I think about that, I see it as your part to play. You know, a covenant is two people coming together. God has his part to play, and we also have a role that we need to play. So I guess the question you want to ask yourself is then what role do I want to play? And it's simple. Your responsibility is first and foremost to fill your heart with God's word. Filling our heart with God's word helps us to know and experience what God has provided for us in his word. Colossians 3, 16 paints this so vividly. It says, let the word of Christ dwell richly in you. This goes beyond a mental accent. God has given us the person of the Holy Spirit. The Bible describes him as a teacher. The Bible describes him as a helper who helps us to understand the word of God and reveals God's will in his word to us. That's John 14, 26. It says, I will teach you all things and remind you of everything I have said to you. I will teach you. So first of all, there is a teaching aspect. When you want to fill your heart with God's word, you need to get into what we call a teaching mode. The Bible talks in the Acts of the Apostles about the Berean Christians. And these were Christians who, after having heard the word, would go back and they would study. They would sit down. You could do that individually if you are a uh, uh, married you could do that at home if you're a young person who is unmarried you could do it with a circle of friends it could be at home it could be at a cafe it could be anywhere you just make a conscious effort to be a student of the word of god so there's a teaching but how many of us know that any information that you cannot recall is useless to you so you're in a situation and you need an information and i'm sure your mind probably flashes back to the examination hall and you say to yourself, but I studied this thing, you know, and for whatever reason, you cannot recall it. Well, you, you and I know that when it comes to marking that section, you will not score very highly because you could not recall the information. And that's the work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit helps us not just to learn. The Bible says he brings to remembrance all things. So I would engage us and I would advise us that we need to engage the person of the Holy Spirit who not only teaches, but reminds us of all things. And why is that important? Because the Word of God in our hearts, it gives the Holy Spirit the right environment to operate in. The Holy Spirit functions best where the Word of God is. And my mind goes back to the book of Genesis, where Bible describes that, you know, the earth was void, there was darkness. And it says, well, the Holy Spirit was brooding over the surface of the deep, a hovering spirit, a brooding spirit, and then God spoke and said, let there be. So we see the word of God proceeding from the mouth of God. And the combination of the word of God and the spirit of God was able to produce a result. So the word of God in our hearts gives the Holy Spirit the right environment to sanctify and transform us. That's John 15, 3. Um, I always like to paint pictures. And one picture that really comes to mind is of uh, surgery that is taking place. And you can imagine where the surgeon uh, stands with the patient in front of him, and he needs a particular tool. And he reaches out and the assistant, and he just says, scalpel. And the assistant's responsibility is to place the right tool in his hands so that he can perform whatever uh, surgery or whatever procedure he needs to perform. And you can imagine how chaotic it would be in the operating room if every time the doctor or the surgeon had to keep turning around looking for the right instruments or equipment all he simply has to do is just say scalpel 
or whatever instrument that he needs, forceps. And then it's the assistant's responsibility to place the right tool in the hands of God. And I think many times that's our relationship, that's how God has designed for it to be. That when you face a situation, what comes out readily is an appropriate word. And so when the enemy came to tempt Christ, Christ was able to reach for the appropriate scripture, the appropriate word, and it would say, it is written. It is what? It is written. Meditating on God's word is also a very good way. Uh, it makes us productive and it makes us prosperous. And I like to say this because many times we need to demystify meditation. You meditate all the time, whether you know it, whether you're conscious of it or not. So when you're thinking about your bills, you are meditating. When you're thinking about your admission, or maybe you've had a disagreement with a friend or your spouse, and the thought cups over your mind, and you're going over the conversation, and you're going over what the person said and didn't say, you are actually, in essence, meditating. So it is a function that God has given us, but we need to learn how to apply that now to the Word of God. So meditating on God's Word, taking a scripture, chewing over that scripture, muttering it repeatedly to yourself. Sometimes it could be a rema, it could be a revelation, like the woman with the issue of blood. Scripture says she kept on repeating to herself. She was saying to herself repeatedly, if I could but touch the helm of his garment. She was meditating. She was meditating on her healing. She was meditating on her deliverance. She was meditating on touching Christ and coming into contact with him. So meditation on God's word makes us productive and prosperous. I'll do two more um, and then we'll just summarize this section of filling our hearts with God's word. The word of God also makes us live above sin. It makes us live above sin. So we realize in Psalm 119 verse 11 and 1 John 3 9 that as we meditate upon God's word, the psalmist says, Thy word have I hid in my heart so that I would not sin against you. It's like an antidote for sin. So when you meditate on God's word, there's something about the word of God that releases a virtue, a defense mechanism, a strength to be able to withstand sin. The Bible says that the grace of God teaches us to say no to every form of ungodliness. And finally, when we are filled with God's word, it also helps us to pray effectively. It's like you have the ability to heal, to hit the target, your bull's eye in the realm of the spirit. When you have the word of God, you have the right tools with which to be able to engage in spiritual warfare and to be able to pray effectively. So I hope that in the course of this class, we've been able to understand the importance of filling our heart with God's word and to understand that there is a teaching component of it and also there's the ability to be able to recall that word, the appropriate word, when the situation demands.